and welcome to Guitar Kickstart. My name is Rick Spurgeon. In this course, we will learn some of the basics to get us learning how to play guitar. In this course, we will learn how to pick out a guitar. We'll also learn about the parts of the guitar and the differences between acoustic and electric guitars. We're also going to talk about how to properly hold our guitars, and we're going to talk about tuners and how to tune our guitars. We'll begin to learn how to read chord graphs and a few easy form chords. We'll practice on changing from chord to chord, and at the end of the course, we're going to talk a little bit about metronomes. Okay, so let's get started. Well, here we are. We decided now is the time to start learning how to play guitar. But we got one problem. We don't even have a guitar yet. Well, we're here at Lidget Music in Council Bluffs, Iowa to talk about some of our different options. As you can see, there are many different options. Size, color, brands, whether it be an acoustic or an electric guitar that you're looking for, new or used, and of course, there's price. Okay, budget is one of the first things that we need to deal with. I highly recommend that you go to your local music store or do some research online and find out kind of what the going rate is on guitars. You can get a decent instrument without breaking the bank, but I do warn you, sometimes you do get what you pay for. So be very careful when kind of looking around and there are some uh, guitar shaped objects out there that uh, may look like a guitar, but uh, they don't play like one. You want to find a guitar that is tunable and feels good in your hands. There are some great uh, instruments that you can get without breaking the bank. Like here, for instance, today I am holding, this is a, a Fender Dreadnought Acoustic, and uh, it's not overly expensive, but this is a good quality instrument, it has die cast tuners, um, also, another thing that you can uh, look out for when you're looking for a guitar and uh, be careful when you're looking at used instruments is that you want to make sure it's in good working order, it's tunable, and uh, make sure that the neck isn't bowed or warped and also the bridge isn't bowed or warped. You want to make sure that the action is uh, very comfortable. And what the action is, is really it's the distance between the uh, strings and the fretboard. You don't want to, you want to make sure it's not too high because uh, when you're trying to play uh, chords or notes, if it's the, if the action is too high, it's going to be hard for you to press down your fingers. And when you're starting to learn how to play, you got to build those calluses and your finger strength. So you want to make sure the guitar is comfortable to play. Also make sure it's not too big for you or too heavy. And a lot of times people may have a, a guitar that they want in mind, but they may go and it just doesn't feel right. So if you have a guitar that you have in mind that you would like to get, go down to your local music store, try it out and try a few of them out and see if it feels right for you. Also, one of the, another thing I would recommend that you get is you want to get yourself a, a good case for your guitar if you plan on taking it anywhere outside your house. I mean, you're investing some money, so you want to make sure your uh, instrument doesn't get beat up. There are a lot of different options uh, to choose from. Um, some people may have a pretty good budget to work with, but make sure you get a good quality instrument. I do recommend you go to your local music store, try out a few, have some of the people maybe recommend and show you some different options. Okay, now if you decide to go with an electric, there are a lot of different options as well. Here I have a, this is a, a, a Squire Stratocaster. Uh, it's made by the Fender Company. You can see it's it's got a beautiful finish. It's not a real expensive guitar. These th This particular guitar, um, retails for about uh, $400. Now sometimes it, uh, if you get some of these starter uh, electric guitars, they may have come with a kit that may have a gig bag. And another thing that you will need to have if you have an electric guitar is you got to have an amplifier to play with. Now there are a lot of different options. They come in all kinds of different sizes and price ranges. You can get yourself uh, a decent amplifier for not a lot of money. 
But there again, amplifiers range all over the place. There are name brands, there are what they call boutique brands, and all kinds of different wattages as well. So lots to choose from, and uh, that'll give you an idea of some of the things that you may want to take into consideration when picking out your guitar. Okay, let's talk about our guitars and our parts of our guitars. Today I'm going to start off with an acoustic guitar. Now this acoustic guitar also happens to be an electric, but we're going to get into that here in a moment. Now the parts of our guitar, uh, for acoustic and electrics, they're pretty much named the same thing. This part here at the top is called our head or our headstock. You're going to notice that they come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, but they all pretty much have the same function. Uh, and the guitars we're going to be talking about in this course are all six string guitars, but you probably notice that there's uh, 12 string guitars and you'll probably see the four string guitars, which are more commonly referred to as bass guitars, which have a lot lower notes. Um, so we have our tuners. I'm sure you've figured that out by now. We have six strings um, coming over here. This little part here coming off of the headstock, this is called a nut where our strings are going to bridge over that, come down this area. This part here of our guitar is called a neck. Now, the front part of our neck of our guitar, you'll see we have this area here. This is called a fingerboard, or it is also referred to as a fretboard, because you're going to know, notice that we have these rectangled areas that go up the neck, and these are called frets. So we come down here and it ends up to the body of the guitar. The top part of our acoustic guitar is here. This is called a soundboard. Now, on our acoustic guitars, we have a hole right here, and that is called the sound hole. Now, some there's some uh, acoustic guitars that will maybe have different shaped sound holes or maybe some smaller sound holes off the side of the guitar, but more, more commonly, uh, it's right here in the center of the guitar. Now, below the uh, sound hole, and it's hard to tell on this guitar because this guitar is black, but there is this black plastic piece, and this is called a pick guard or a scratch plate because when you're strumming your guitar, um, sometimes uh, you can scratch your guitar. Now, I do have some guitars that don't have that as well, and they do get scratched up. So this kind of helps protect your guitar a little bit. So the strings come down over here and end at this portion of our guitar and this is called the bridge. Now how an acoustic guitar works is acoustics are the physics of sound. So the string vibrates and goes into the sound hole and goes into the body of the guitar bounces around inside there and projects out the sound hole uses the science of sound called acoustics and that's why they're called an acoustic guitar okay now i have an electric guitar and the parts of it are pretty much called the same thing as the acoustic guitar you're going to notice that the headstock on this particular model is a lot different than what we had on the acoustic guitar. And you're going to notice all the tuners are on one side of the headstock. They function the same way, it's just uh, design. And um, this particular uh, model of electric guitar is referred to as a Stratocaster, or for short we call them Strats. This particular guitar was made by the Fender Company. They were the actual inventor of the Stratocaster. but you're going to notice that there are a lot of other brands out there that make a very similar model and function of electric guitar. So it, once again, we have the head or the headstock, the nut. Coming down, we have the neck of the guitar. We have the fretboard. One of the things I did want to point out to you that on our fretboard, uh, we have dots. Some guitars may have uh, squares or dots or other kind of designs. Uh, 
every so often on the frets, and these are position markers. Now, later on, when you get more advanced in your guitar playing, those are going to come in handy because they're going to show you the different positions that you can play chords and scales at, and they serve as sort of landmarks on our guitar. But for this course, we're going to be concentrating pretty much in this first three fret area, which is referred to as the first position. So moving on, we have the body of the guitar. Now this body of this electric guitar is solid. It's solid piece of wood. Now uh, our acoustics are hollow, uh, so the sound can bounce around inside the guitar and project out the sound hole. Now not all electric guitars are solid. There's quite a few models out there that are hollow um, and they're really uh, used for a lot of jazz playing. Uh, also, a lot of rock um, as well, It gives you and blues. It gives you a little bit more sustain with a hollow guitar, but uh, the uh, solid body is a very commonly used uh, electric guitar format. Now, coming down here, you're going to notice here at the end of uh, our strings, we have a, a bridge. And uh, the bridge on an electric guitar more commonly is metal and uh, it helps uh, uh, supply a lot more sustain on our, our strings. Now this particular model has a handle uh, that is attached to the bridge of the guitar and its function, it's called a whammy bar and what it does is you can bend notes and chords and also add vibrato to it as well. They're a lot of fun. Now, acoustic and electric guitars, uh, the notes, the chords are all the same. If you can play an acoustic guitar, you can play an electric guitar and vice versa. They just use two different principles of science on how they produce sound. Now, you see on the front part of this guitar, we have these things. These are called pickups, and that is what their function is. They pick up the vibration of the string and uh, turn it into basically an electrical impulse. What these are are magnets and the magnet senses the, picks up the vibration of the string, turns it into an electrical impulse, goes through the wires and circuitry of the guitar, through the cord into the speaker, which we call an amplifier. Now the amplifier inside of it has a paper cone, a speaker that has a magnet attached to it as well. So what happens is the electrical impulse picks up from this magnet, goes through the cord, and vibrates the other magnet. Now the more uh, power that you give it, the more the magnet uh, vibrates and shakes uh, the paper cone, and that's how um, an, acoustic, or an uh, amplifier works. And, and uh, You'll need to have one of those if you're playing electric guitar, or you're really not going to be able to hear what you're playing. Now, this particular model of electric guitar, we have these knobs, and um, this particular one has one volume knob and two tone controls. There are some electric guitars that have two separate volume knobs and two control knobs, or tone control knobs. Now, uh, the volume knob does exactly what it says it does. I can turn that down, it turns down the volume, and turn it up, and it turns up the volume. You can control your volume if you want more or less of it by just your control knob instead of having to go over to your amplifier. Now uh, these knobs here are tone controls, and what they do is they shape the tone of uh, what the uh, certain pickups uh, supply tone up to, and you can control whether you get more of a, a darker tone or a brighter tone by just uh, uh, working with your tone controls. Now here uh, we have a, a switch and this is called a pickup selector and what it does is if I have my switch all the way up uh, in the up position it turns on this pickup which we refer to as the neck pickup. Now a neck pickup has sort of a, a darker, mellower sound. It's really good for playing rhythm guitar and uh, more cleaner tones. Now 
if I select the, to the next uh, section, it makes a combination of the bridge, I'm, I'm sorry, the neck pickup and the middle pickup. So it brightens it up. Now in the middle here, it is a combination of, it depends on how your guitar is wired. Some guitars will have it, the uh, bridge or the neck and the bridge pickup at the same time, or some have on all three. So you get more of a fuller sound. You're getting the darker sounds of the uh, neck pickup and you're getting brighter tones of the bridge pickup. The next position, it's a combination of the middle pickup and the bridge pickup. And you're noticing as the pickups go toward the bridge, you're getting brighter and brighter. And all the way down, I have the bridge pickup. The bridge pickup is good for playing a lot of lead guitar kind of things, or if you're looking for some really bright sounds in your rhythm playing. So uh, that is how an electric guitar uh, works. Now the physics of a guitar here, you, you notice that I'm sure by messing with your guitars you've discovered that as you're going up the neck the notes get higher and as you go down the neck toward the headstock the neck, the notes get lower. And what we have is uh, our nut and our bridge, we have a point A and point B. The string vibrates at a certain frequency and that is the note. And as we go up the frets, we shorten the distance between A and B. And the note or the string will vibrate faster and faster. And that is a real quick <laughs> physics lesson on uh, how uh, the notes uh, work on a guitar. So that's the parts of our guitar, the difference between acoustics and electrics. And uh, next we're going to start by learning how to tune our guitars. Okay, one of the first things we need to uh, talk about is the how to properly hold our guitar. Now, um, you want to set it uh, on your lap, just kind of on one leg. Some You might be uh, comfortable for you to set it on this leg. I like to set it over here. I get a, a nice position and it's comfortable for my arm and my wrist this way. So I set it on my leg right here. You want to keep your guitar kind of nice and parallel. You don't want to lay it flat kind of like that because you're not going to have a good position when you're trying to play chords. You want to keep it nice and parallel and uh, that way you can have a nice angle on your fingers and get the best sound from your chords. If you don't have the guitar setting right, also can create some pain in your hands and wrists and that wouldn't be good. Another thing I want to talk about is picks. The uh, proper name for them is a plectrum, but uh, most commonly referred to as a guitar pick. You're going to notice they come in all shapes and sizes. And I do uh, highly recommend that you go down to your local music store and uh, pick out several. Uh, there are all kinds of different shapes, sizes, colors, um, thicknesses, and uh, try some out and see which ones you like. Every guitar player sort of has the pick that they like. I like one that has kind of a grip. I, I use kind of a medium pick. There's some that are, are heavy. Um, you're going to find that the heavier picks, uh, you're not going to, when you're strumming, they're going to be a little louder. Uh, thin picks will uh, have a little bit more of a softer sound. I like something in medium. Uh, got has a little bend to it. But you just, uh, you're going to hold it between your uh, first finger and your thumb. And just kind of grip it like that. I don't use uh, a lot of pick. You just want to use uh, a little bit of the tip. Like that. You don't want to use too much pick. Because uh, that doesn't sound very good. So just uh, practice using uh, just the tip of your pick. Just a little bit. And uh, as you uh, progress in your playing, you'll become uh, more comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now let's tune our guitars. Um, I'm going to talk to you about electronic tuners. If you don't have an electronic tuner yet, uh, please consider getting one. Uh, these are going to be very handy when you're tuning up your guitar to be most accurate. There's a couple of uh, different kinds. There's actually several different kinds of tuners and all, all kinds of different shapes and sizes and price ranges. Uh, these two are fairly inexpensive and they work in two different ways. Now this one here is a standard uh, electronic tuner and uh, it functions in a couple different ways. It does have a built-in microphone here in the front so if you're playing an acoustic guitar uh, it'll pick up the sound of your guitar. Also on the side here if you have an electric guitar you can plug your uh, electric directly into the tuner and tune it up that way. So it can either work by sound or direct into that. Now these are some of the newest tuners on the market and uh, this particular one here uh, there's several different kinds of brands. This one uh, works on vibration of your guitar and uh, they're very accurate, uh, fairly inexpensive and uh, it's starting to become a standard out there. A lot of people are, are using these little clip-on tuners and what you do is you just clip the tuner onto your headstock. You start to uh, tune your strings. It picks up the vibration of the string and reads the note. It's really handy if you've got a lot of background noise. It won't interfere with uh, the note that you're tuning to. On these tuners, if you are trying to tune your acoustic and you're uh, just going through the microphone, if you have background noise, if you have TVs going on, your dog's barking, kids yelling, whatever you have, uh, there's going to be a lot of interference going on on your tuner. Uh, another thing on the tuner, it will uh, show whether your note is flat or sharp or if you're in tune. And we're going to walk through that here in just a moment. I'm going to use the little clip-on tuner and we'll tune our strings and uh, just kind of walk you through it and you can see how it's done. And uh, I do recommend that you get yourself an electronic tuner if you don't already have them. Uh, some of you uh, may have gotten a guitar kit that comes uh, uh, equipped with one, but if you don't have one, please go down to your uh, local music store and purchase one. Okay, the next thing we're going to need to talk about is how to tune our guitars. It's very important because uh, you want yourself to sound good as you're playing your notes and chords. And uh, one of the first things we need to learn is what the names of our strings are. Our strings in standard tuning are named to the notes that they are tuned to. Now, uh, starting here with our low string, and I say low string because it's the deepest one. This one is our E. That's our E string. Next up, we have our A string. This is A. Then we have our D. Next here in the middle, we have our G. This is our G. Then, we have our B. And then, last but not least, we have our E. It's a high E. So we have two E's. We have a low E and a high E. Once again, I'll go through that. It's E, A, D, G, B, and E. I have a saying that I tell all my students, and this really helps them uh, memorize what the names of their strings are. The saying goes, Ed ate dynamite, good bye, Ed. So if you remember that silly little saying, you'll always know what the names of your strings are. Ed ate dynamite, good bye, Ed. E, A, D, G, B, and E. And that's what the names of our strings are. We'll need to know that. 
because we're, next we're going to talk about tuning and we need to know what the names of our notes are so we can tune it to the right note. Okay, uh, now we're going to tune up together and I'm going to demonstrate the vibration uh, headstock tuner and you can follow along to, with that. If you don't have a tuner of your own, um, you can tune up with me and uh, hopefully we will uh, be relatively uh, close to being uh, the same in tune. So first of all, when I tune up, I always start with my low E. Now you're going to see that tuner, it says E in the middle. And you want to get it right uh, at the middle of the tuner where it's green. It'll say E. Hang on a second. Let me adjust that a little bit. There we go. We're in tune. Now I move on to the A. It says I'm a little flat, so when I, if I don't have the green and it's on this side of the arrow, means I probably need to tighten my string a little bit so I get it in the green. A little too much there. That's our A. Now we're going to move on to the D. That one says I'm a little sharp, so now I need to Loosen my peg just a little bit. Just a little dab. A little dab will do you. It's right in the green. It says D. I'm good to go. Next we move on to the G. That one looks right on the money. Let me play that again. G. Next, let's move on to the B. It says I'm a little sharp. I'm going to loosen that a little bit. And that's the B. Next, let's move on to the high E. says I'm a little sharp. Let me bring it back a little bit. Sometimes if you're a little sharp you might want to bring it down under uh, where it's flat and then come back up on it. Tune. Are you in tune? All right. So that is uh, tuning up our guitar. One more time. I'm going to go uh, just really quickly through the strings so you can check your tuning as well. We'll go back to the low E. Now we're going to go to A. Then to D. Now we go to G. Okay, now the next segment we're going to talk about is starting to play chords. One of the things that we need to understand is how a chord grid works or a chord graph. Now, as you can see, there are vertical lines and horizontal lines. And let me demonstrate how those work. That grid, what it is, is like your guitar is sort of, sort of standing up in front of you. You're going to see uh, these 
vertical lines, these are your guitar strings. And the horizontal areas are your frets. Now, another thing we need to understand is there, there are going to be dots on there, and those are our finger positions. Now, our fingers are going to be numbered. One is our index finger, our pointer finger. Two is our middle finger. Three is going to be our ring finger. And four is our pinky. So it goes one, two, three, and four. You're going to see those numbers on your chord uh, graphs, and that's going to be the finger that you used to put down on the string and the fret. Now we're going to begin learning an easy form chord. The first chord we're going to talk about is the easy form G. And why I call it an easy form because really we're just using one finger for that. Then uh, later on we're going to learn the full G chord, but for right now, since we're just starting out, we're going to just start with some one finger chords and then build up from there. The first one we're talking about is the easy form G. We're going to use just our third finger. We're going to put that on the first string. And when I say first string, uh, we're counting our uh, strings from the high E down. So our first string is going to be our high E. It's going to go one, first string, second string, third string, fourth string, fifth string, and sixth string is our low E. So our first string being the high E, third finger, third fret, and you want to... Uh, Make sure you get that right on the tip of your uh, finger. You want to your finger standing up pretty straight. You don't want to uh, lay it back like that. And also make sure your finger is not on the fret wire because it'll buzz. You want to have it uh, kind of right before it. Now I have my finger up pretty straight, so you like soldiers at attention. You want to. Uh, get your finger right there. And I have my thumb comfortably positioned on the back part of my neck so I can have a, a good arch on my finger so it's not accidentally touching the next string underneath. You don't want that because that'll af affect the tone of the uh, chord and it deadens out an important note to have in that chord. Now for the easy form G we're just going to play the top four strings. So starting with my open D, I'm just pressing my third finger down on the third fret and strumming down once again. One more time. And that is the easy form G chord. Guess what? playing guitar. Okay, now what we're going to do is some uh, strumming exercises uh, using our easy G form. And one thing I need to cover first is we need to talk about some rests. And uh, I know we were saying that we were not going to do a lot of music theory, but these are an important part of these exercises. So I'm going to go over these with you uh, right now, just briefly. The first rest we're going to talk about is the whole rest. The whole rest receives four counts. So instead of playing, we rest for four counts. So. Uh, to demonstrate, I would like strum and then rest one, two, three, four. That's called a whole rest. Next, we have the half rest. And the half rest gets two counts. So instead of playing, we would rest for two counts. So it would be one, two, three, four, one, two like that. 
for an example, you're going to notice there's some similarities between the whole rest and the half rest. One goes one direction, one goes the other. Uh, I tell my students, here's kind of how you can picture the difference. Imagine the whole rest and the half rest are like hats sitting on a table. The whole rest, the hat is flipped upside down so you see the hole at the top of the hat. I know it's spelled differently, but you get the idea. Next, I'm going to talk about the quarter rest. You're going to notice the quarter rest sort of looks like a lightning bolt. Uh, the quarter rest gets only one count, so you would rest for one beat. One more thing I'd like to cover before we move on to the exercises is uh, the strum. Now you're going to see a slash like this. That indicates a down strum. So that would be just strumming down, starting from your low strings, going to your high strings, just strumming down that way. Okay, I think we're ready to begin the exercise. Okay, next up we're going to work on a, a, a strumming exercise using our easy G form. Now, uh, on this exercise, you'll notice that we have our, our down strums and our whole rests. Uh, you're also going to notice on this line there are some vertical lines dividing up the uh, lines. Those are called measures. So, in these exercises, each one of those segments, which we call measures, get four counts. So, on this exercise, I'm playing my easy G form. And uh, I'm just going to demonstrate and just kind of watch what I do. So here's how it works. It goes one, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. All right, let's try it together. I'm going to give us a four count. And uh, we're just going to take our time. And are you ready? One, two, three, four. Strum, 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 strum. Rest, two, three, four. Strum, 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 strum. Rest, two, three, four. All right, good job. Let's try it one more time together. I'll give us a four count. One, two, three, four. Strum, 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 strum. Rest, two, three, four. Strum, 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 strum. Rest, two, three, four. All right, good job. Now, uh, work on this on your own for a little bit. Take your time with it. When you feel comfortable with the strumming exercise, move on to the next one. We'll see you there. Okay, this next exercise, we're going to still use the easy G form. And once again, uh, it is with our third finger on the third fret on the first string just strumming those top four strings. Now on this exercise, we're introducing the half rest. So remember that half rest gets two counts. I'm going to play through this and just kind of watch what I do, and then we'll play it together. So it goes strum, 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 rest, rest, strum, 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 rest, rest. All right, let's try it together. I'm going to give us a four count. One, two, three, four. Strum, 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 rest, rest. Strum, 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 rest, rest. All right, let's do it one more time together. 
but give us a four count. One, two, three, four. All right, good job. Take your time with this, work on this on your own, and then we'll move on to exercise number three. Okay, here we are at exercise number three. We're still using the easy form G. Now this one, we are introducing the quarter rest. The quarter rest gets one count. And I will play through this and demonstrate it. Watch what I do, and then we'll play it together. So we have strum, 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 rest. Strum, 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 rest. All right, let's try it together. I'll give us a four count to start off. One, two, three, four. Strum, 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 rest. Strum, 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 rest. All right, very good. Let's do it one more time together. I'll give us a four count. One, two, three, four. All right, good job. All right, now you're on your own. Work on this for a little bit, and once you're comfortable, move on to exercise number four. Okay, it's time to learn another chord now. Uh, we have the easy form C chord. The easy form C chord is just taking our first finger and putting it on the first fret on our second string. And we're just going to play the top three strings. These three strings right here. That is our easy form C chord. Now be careful with your uh, finger that it doesn't accidentally touch the uh, high E string underneath. You want to keep it pretty, uh, pretty straight up because if you tend to bring it down, you're going to mute that open string and you don't want that. You want to keep it straight up like a soldier at attention, as they used to say. So the easy form C chord is played like that. Okay, it's time for exercise number four. This time we're using the easy form C chord. And uh, you're going to notice that we have some half rests in there. So we're going to be strumming with some half rests. I'll play through it, watch what I do, and then we will play it together. So I'm going to start off with a, giving myself a four count. So one, two, three, four, and I strum, strum. Rest, rest, strum, 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 rest, rest. All right, let's play it together. You ready? I'm going to give us a four count. Easy form C chord. One, two, three, four. Strum, 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 rest, rest. Strum, 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 rest, rest. Another thing I do want to mention on this 
is uh, I didn't mention on the exercises before, but when you do rest, it's nice to take your hand and just kind of put it on the strings and dampen the strings so they don't vibrate out. So you get a good uh, silent rest. So let's try exercise number four one more time together. One, two, three, four. Strum. Rest, 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 rest. All right, try it on your own, work on it, and when you feel comfortable, let's move on to exercise number five. All right, here we are at exercise number five playing the easy form C chord. Uh, I'm going to walk through this. You're going to see that we have some quarter rests on this one. I'll walk through this, watch what I do. You guys know the drill now, so here we go. One, two, three, four. Rest. Rest. All right, let's try it together. I'm going to give us a four count. You ready? One, two, three, four. Rest. Rest. All right, here we go. Let's try it one more time together. Give us a four count. One, two, Three, four. Okay, it's time for another chord. This one we're going to talk about is the easy form G7 chord. Now we're going to take our first finger and we're going to put that on the first string, first fret. Now for the easy form G7, we can play our top four strings. You want to make sure that also with your finger that you're not touching the fret wire. You want to be right kind of before that fret wire there. Press down nice and, and firmly so you get a you're getting a tone off your note. So the easy form G7 is just our first finger on the first fret on the first string. Okay, here we are at exercise number six. This time we are playing the easy form G7 chord. And I'm going to walk us through this one. And this one we got uh, chord rests on. So it uh, is going to go like this. Strum, 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 rest. Strum, strum, strum. Rest. All right, let's try it together. I'm going to give us a four count. We're playing the easy form G7 chord this time. You guys ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Rest. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Rest. Okay, great. Let's try it one more time together. Here's the four count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Rest. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Rest. All right, excellent. Work on that on your own. And when you're comfortable with that G7, 
Let's move on to the next exercise. Coming up is exercise number seven. Okay, here we are at exercise number seven. Now in exercise number seven, you're going to see that we are going to go from the easy form C chord to the easy form G7 chord. So we're starting to change chords now. Now in this one, I start off with my easy C chord and I'm gonna go strum, 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 rest. And as I'm resting, I'm gonna move my first finger down to the first string to play that easy form G7 chord. Then I'm gonna go strum, 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 rest, and then as I'm resting, I'm moving to the back to the C chord. One, two, three, rest, and back to the G7 again. One, two, three, rest. Okay, I'm gonna walk through it one more time and then we're gonna do it together. So it's gonna go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, rest, G7. One, two, three, rest, back to C. One, two, three, rest. One, two, three, rest. Okay, one more time. Here we go. We give us four count. One, two, three, four. Strum, 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 change, strum, 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 change, strum, 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 change, strum, 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 rest. All right, that's exercise number seven. Now we're starting to learn to change from chord to chord. Work on that, take your time, and get comfortable with it before you move on to exercise number eight. Okay, here we are, exercise number eight. We're going to use the easy form C chord and the easy form G7 chord, practicing going from chord to chord. You're gonna notice on exercise number eight, we start off strumming the C for four strums, the G7 for four strums. Then we're going to have a measure where we're gonna have the C for two strums, the G7 for two strums, then ending on our C chord for four strums. So I'm gonna demonstrate this. One, two, three, four. 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 Now, this one's going to take you a little bit of practicing. I want you to work on this to you not stopping between chord changes. Uh, one thing you can think of is when you're going from chord to chord, like for this first measure, I'm playing the C chord, and it goes one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. On the uh, fourth beat, uh, you would say and before you get to one. On that and, you start to make your change. So, Let's try this together. I'm going to give us a four count, and this is going to go like this. One, two, three, four. Strum, 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 and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. All right, let's try it together one more time. I'll give us a four count. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Strum, 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 and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Excellent job. Work on those exercises before we move on to the next chord. OK, 
Okay, one of the things I'd like to talk to you about now is uh, a metronome. This is a handy little tool for when you're practicing uh, strumming your uh, chord exercises. Uh, it sets a, a beat for you. Now there's different uh, kinds of metronomes. This is a relatively inexpensive one. I've had this for a number of years. Uh, they also have some really cool apps for smartphones that have uh, metronomes on them as well, which are uh, really cool. I do highly advise uh, for you to get some sort of metronome to work with on your own uh, practicing. Set it at a slow pace and uh, get kind of used to working with uh, strumming along with that. I'm going to set something here. Um, you know, I, on here it gives you uh, beats per minute. And uh, you can set, set it to a slow tempo when you're going through some of your strumming things. That way you're just kind of used to something helping you keep the beat and keep a rhythm. And then uh, gradually you can increase the speed uh, as you progress in your uh, uh, strumming exercises. So, uh, metronome. Uh, you can get these at your friendly uh, neighborhood music store. Uh, you can also get these on uh, Amazon and uh, at your app store uh, for your uh, smartphones. So uh, uh, get yourself a metronome to work with. Okay, here we are. We're at the end of the course. It went pretty fast, didn't it? Now I invite you to join my course Introduction to Guitar. In this course, you will do some review about what we have already talked about so far, or you're welcome to jump ahead to the full chords. This course, you will learn how to play the major, minor, as well as the dominant seven chords. You're also going to learn how to read tablature, and by the end of the course, you'll be able to play some 12-bar blues. This course has over 60 video examples and printable PDFs for you to practice with. It'll also have some jam tracks for you to play along with. So, as you can see, the journey is just beginning. There's so much more to learn. So, we'll see you there.